This is a Scotch yoke, a mechanism that converts rotary motion into reciprocating linear motion, or vice versa. But what the heck is a yoke, and what makes this Scottish? These are important questions, so in this video we'll be exploring this artifact from the Industrial Revolution, why it wasn't used the way people often describe, and its critical application in predicting the tides. Let's get started. Since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, engineers have had to come up with creative methods of converting between linear motion and rotational motion. And let me tell you, they came up with a lot. From the humble crank to the mesmerizing sun and planet gear, the Industrial Revolution birthed a whole range of methods to achieve the vital task of converting the reciprocating linear motion of steam engine pistons into continuous rotary motion transmitted through gigantic flat belts across vast factories and used to power pretty much every machine at the time. And this, the Scotch yoke, was one such invention. It constrains a rotating element by way of a pin within a slot which slides back and forth. When driven by the rotating side, as in this example, it creates smooth reciprocating linear movement at the output. Historical documentation of the Industrial Revolution and its various inventions is quite narrow. There is plenty of documentation surrounding James Watt and his invention of the steam engine, but names and dates attached to this quaint little mechanism have proven quite difficult to track down indeed. The Scotch yoke appears in technical manuals of mechanisms dating back to the early 19th century, and is described within the book 507 Mechanical Movements as, quote, crank motion with the crank wrist working in a slotted yoke, thereby dispensing with the oscillating connecting rod or pitman. But what does Scotch yoke actually mean? Well, yoke refers to a device which connects two parts together, controlling their movement, and is referenced heavily in engineering documentation from the time. But Scotch was harder to pin down. Many people, including every AI service out there, seem to think that it refers to a Scottish origin of the device, but in my opinion, this link is completely baseless. I think it actually refers to the linear cutout in the same way that hopscotch refers to lines drawn, and indeed another meaning for scotch is a cut, gash, or score. Considering that another common name for this mechanism is a slotted yoke crank, I reckon that's where it all comes from, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And honestly, for most applications, a crank makes more sense, because the Scotch yoke has one serious downside. Friction. There's a lot of it. The pin slides up and down the slot and the yoke slides back and forth between the guides. And sliding friction is bad news for the longevity of a mechanism. But just how bad could it be? Well, to test it, I designed this Scotch yoke mechanism powered by a monstrously overpowered brushless motor. We know that these mechanisms have friction in the movements with the pin sliding and moving around. But what I want to test is just how bad that friction and vibration actually is. So what I'm going to do is power it up and spin it really, really fast and see what happens. Uh, the frame is made from ABS and the Scotch Shake mechanism itself is made from PLA. And I've got a thermal imaging camera here to see what heats up. So let's do this. Gonna get pretty loud. <laughs> well then. <laughs> well then, that didn't take long for the mechanism to explode and fail spectacularly, but to be fair, the moving components were printed from PLA. Now, as you may know, PLA softens at a very low temperature. And if you've read my ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks, you would know that. Because the friction creates heat, that heat softens the plastic, and then the soft plastic creates more friction and therefore more heat, and the whole system runs away to eventually failing catastrophically. Now, obviously there is methods of reducing sliding friction, like using low friction materials or just slathering the whole thing in grease but this design will not last nearly as long as an equivalent crank or sun and planet gear arrangement. In fact, I couldn't find in my research any example of a Scotch yoke mechanism being used in a steam engine to turn reciprocating motion into rotary motion like a sun and planet gear or crank. 
I'm sure it did exist. I found some model engineers who had made more recent versions of the Scotch yoke, but I couldn't find any commercial use. But it was this document that was the breakthrough I needed. This is the Pumped Catechism, a practical help to runners, owners, and makers of pumps of any kind from 1888. And what do you know, it has various pumps using the Scotch yoke mechanism to turn rotary motion into a uniform reciprocating linear motion to pump fluids. And what's even cooler is that it gives reasoning as to why. The author writes that the advantage of the Scotch yoke mechanism is, quote, the first half of the outstroke of the yoke corresponds to the first quarter of the crank revolution and so on all around the revolution. This is not the case with the connecting rod in which each quarter of the revolution of the crank corresponds to more or less than a half stroke of the piston or plunger. That is to say, the Scotch yoke has one major advantage over both the sun and planet gear and the crank. It produces a perfect sine wave. It's hard to see it just by looking at it, but if I plot the amplitude over time of a crank and Scotch yoke and put them side by side, you can see that the crank doesn't produce a perfect sine wave. It's close, but only the Scotch yoke is 100% accurate. And for some applications, this difference is really important. Early tide prediction machines used many Scotch yokes to generate the cosine values needed to calculate and predict tides. These mechanical computers are beautifully complex and far beyond the scope of my knowledge, but it's an excellent example of where this mechanism shines. And there's another neat trick the Scotch yoke can do that a crank can't. It can be programmed. By changing the slot to another shape, you can drastically change the output, adding dwells, rapid direction changes, and more, simply through slight geometric changes. You can get quite creative with the curves and the outputs it creates, but it's not gonna be as free form as something like a cam, which really is the king of mechanical programmed movement. Many people over the years have expanded on the Scotch yoke mechanism to improve it in various ways, but I got to thinking, could the sliding friction be removed entirely? In 3D printers, the X, Y, and Z axes slide back and forth for hundreds to thousands of hours without significant wear. But how do they do it? Well, with these, linear bearings. These are a much more modern invention, but these clever devices contain captive ball bearings, converting what was sliding friction into roller friction, which is a lot lower and far less destructive on the motion components. So I got to designing and building my own design for a low friction Scotch yoke. And thanks to this video's sponsor, PCBWay, this is what I came up with. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for custom PCBs, 3D prints, CNC parts, and much more. And these components look absolutely stunning. I exported each part as a step file and uploaded them to PCBWay's quote engine from where you can select from a huge range of materials and finishes. And because I want the separate parts to be easily identifiable, I decided to try out PCBWay's anodizing service for this project. I haven't done any anodizing before, but I think I'm addicted. I just love how bright the colors are and it really kicks up the professional look of the final parts, highly recommended. PCBWay has also recently introduced an incredible new PCB option called Rigid Flex, which lets you create rigid circuits with flexible connectors all in one board. I can just imagine how incredibly useful this PCB manufacturing technique would be for robotics. For example, let's say you've got a sensor that needs to be rigidly mounted to a moving actuator. You can use the rigid part for that sensor, then have the flex component to join the circuitry back to the main body of the robot. It's a really interesting manufacturing technique and something definitely worth checking out. So if you want to turbocharge your project with almost any material or process, why not give PCBWay a go? You can use the code PCBWayMakersMuse10 for $10 off any order over $30. More information in the video description below. Big thanks to PCUA for sponsoring this video. Instead of a pin that slides up and down a slot, my variation on the Scotch yoke uses a linear bearing riding on a constrained rod to create that reciprocating motion. And this component also has a bearing on which to rotate as it moves. The yoke is supported by two eight mm linear rods which ride on four linear bearings to stabilize the entire contraption. I slapped that same brushless motor on the back with a three to one reduction, and this was the first test.
The reason for the unusual layout is because in testing, I found that the yoke could easily twist out of alignment due to the uneven forces and jam the whole thing up. A big linear rail instead of rods would probably have worked as well, but all of these components start to stack and that causes problems of its own. So by moving the rods to the top and bottom, the entire movement is rock solid and very low friction. And as a side benefit, you can clearly see everything that's going on. I'll be honest, I don't think there's any practical application for my modified Scotch yoke mechanism. At the end of the day, it just turns rotary motion into reciprocating motion, just in a slightly different way to a crank which is much simpler. But it is far more interesting to watch visually, it's mesmerizing, which makes it a great choice in my opinion for any sort of mechanical art. We need to turn a rotary motion into a reciprocating motion to move things back and forth, chain up different mechanisms to make all sorts of interesting things. Thanks for watching guys, bye.